Hello, magandang hapon sa lahat. Welcome to the October 2021 edition of the UP SLIS webinar series. This is organized by the UP School of Library and Information Studies. We welcome students and teachers of Library and Information Science, uh, information professionals, and all our friends in the Philippines and around the world. I am Elijah Darhuan, a faculty member from UP SLIS and your host and moderator for this webinar. This webinar is in high definition or HD for an optimal viewing experience and to ensure you can read the text in the presentation slides, please check and adjust the settings of this live stream to HD. Right now, you may also check the audio and adjust to the volume to a comfortable listening level. You can also watch this webinar live on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook page, UPSLIS. You can also watch at our official channel on Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash UPSLIS. This webinar is still part of our hashtag Webinar Wednesday that we started July last year. The webinars are also part of the celebration of the 60th anniversary of UPSLIS. Before we continue, let me explain the mechanics for today's events. You can send us your questions at any time during the webinar. To post your questions, go to slido.com. That's www.slido.com and type in the code AutismComics or hashtag AutismComics. Again, that's slido.com, S-L-I-D-O dot com with the code AutismComics. We will not entertain questions posted in the chat or comment section. Again, to post your question, go to slido.com and type in the code Autism Comics. We will show you the website and code on screen throughout the talk. Alternatively, you can also use the QR code shown on the screen to go to the questions page. We will issue certificates of participation to those who will be joining us in this live event. We ask that you finish the webinar and watch out for the announcement containing the link to where you can register for your certificate. As part of the requirements for the certificate, you need to answer a question correctly. We advise that you listen intently to the speaker during the talk. If you answer incorrectly, you can re-watch the video and try again. For registered professionals, this webinar may be applied for Continuing Professional Development or CPD as a self-directed learning activity. Again, please stay with us until the end of this webinar for instructions on how to get your certificate. If in case you missed portions of this webinar, you may view this as a Facebook video or check our YouTube and Twitch channels. Okay, that's it for the mechanics. Let's get things moving. We have yet another interesting and informative webinar this afternoon from a very special guest. I know you are all excited to start, so let me introduce our guests for today. Our guest is a journalism graduate from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She has worked on the editorial staff of various ABS-CBN publications and sat as editor-in-chief of Questor, the ultimate anime magazine. Currently working as a full-time freelance writer, she adopts scripts of English-language licensed manga such as Toradora and It Started With a Kiss and has written original works including Moonlight Meow, and the Carnal series of comics. Her current collaboration with her artist husband, Roland, is the well-received To Be Do Asks, a graphic novel which chronicles their family's autism journey. The book is an official selection of the first ever Philippine International Comics Festival, or PICOF, and its proposed adaptation won Best Pitch at this year's Asian Festival of Children's Content, or AFCC, held in Singapore. Just March of this year, she was included among the Philippine Star Life's The Ladies of Comics, a list of women who changed local comics for the better. Take note, that's comics with a K, Philippine comics. Our special guest is a former boss and a good friend of our former Dean Igor Kabab. Everyone, let's welcome Ms. Bambi Eloriaga Amago. Okay, thank you very much for that intro. And let me just share my screen here. Uh, here and so thanks also to Professor Igor Kabab for this title card. And yes, welcome to my lecture about autism and comics. As mentioned, I am Bambi Eloriaga Amago. 
I used to work for Features Magazine, but now I work full time creating comics along with my husband, Roland, who is an artist. And when we're not creating comics, you can usually find us attending conventions, pre-pandemic times. Now all of the conventions are online. And yes, we are also invited to lectures and talks. Uh, our body of works usually center around uh, supernatural elements, like for our Carnal series of comics and for Moonlight Meow, which was published in the US. So Do Be Do Asks is actually a first for us in that it's the first time that we were able to handle a work that is uh, biographical in nature, that is a slice of life. But before all that, let me just get some definitions out of the way, but let me put a disclaimer here in saying that I am not a medical expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a therapist. So a lot of the stuff that I will be sharing with you today comes from my experience as a parent. So what is autism? The medical definition of autism or autism spectrum disorder, ASD, according to the American Psychi Psych sorry, Psychiatric Association, defines ASD as a complex developmental condition that involves persistent challenges in social interaction, speech and nonverbal communication, and restricted repetitive behaviors. So it is a developmental condition means that somewhere along the way in a child's or a person's development, it doesn't follow the normal development of a typical child. So we have what we call milestones. And every parent is familiar with this, like, kailan siya nagsimulang magsalita? Kailan siya naglakad? So there are milestones that a child has to reach throughout his development. Usually, usually uh, or not usually, a person with ASD, sometimes he skips these milestones, sometimes the milestones are delayed, sometimes the milestones are advanced. For example, like my son at two, he can already read. So at first you will think, wow, that's great. He's a genius. But uh, what most people do not know are these milestones have to be achieved in a sort of order. So this is a red flag. If you notice that uh, there are developmental milestones that are skipped or advanced or are not being reached, you have to consult your developmental pediatrician. But So um, that is the medical definition of autism and it focuses on their deficits or what makes them different or what is what they cannot do there is now in the autism community a shift to the social model wherein autistic individuals are treated harshly for multiple reasons primarily due to the language used to describe autism the autism discourse is dominated by concepts of autism being a disorder and a deficit this allows predominant neurotypes to treat autistic people as less than human because autistic individuals are seen as diminished versions of the perfect predominant neurotype person. This is a profound type of barrier, something which has to be tackled using the social model of disability. This is according to Richard Woods uh, in an article which he wrote entitled Exploring How the Social Model of Disability Can Be Reinvigorated for Autism. So if we look at it through the medical framework, we are looking at their deficits. And if we think of it in terms of medicine, there is a, there is a, a concept that it is a disease that has to be cured. But under the social model, it is just a different type of way of thinking. That's why it's called neurodiversity. And so it's part and parcel of being that person. What has this got to do with comics? Late, uh, later, uh, we will see that there is a similar shift in perspectives in comics. So comics is, as most of you probably know or are familiar with, it is combining text and images to tell a story in sequential panels. Okay, so uh, here are examples of... 
autistic superheroes that are identified. So what does identified mean? In fiction, we have what we call claimed characters and identified characters. When we say claimed, uh, these are characters that the autism community can relate with because they exhibit characteristics or mga pag-uugali that uh, autistic individuals can relate to. For example, like the MCU version of Drax. When he takes things too literally, uh, nakaka-relate yung mga autistic individuals doon. Or other examples are like L of Death Note or Lisbeth Salander of the Millennium series of novels. Ano yung identify? Uh, a person is identified as autistic when it is clearly stated that they are autistic or they have this condition within the narrative itself. For example, sa Rain Man, a classic example, uh, he is identified as an autistic savant in that scene where his brother Tom Cruise comes to get him from the facility. Um, here are the examples of the identified superheroes uh, that are clearly identified in the comics. So in, uh, in the 1980s, According to Robert Rosema in an article he published in Ot, the Journal of Autistic Culture, entitled Waiting for Autistic Superman on Autistic Representation in Superhero Comics, he said that the first explicitly named autistic character to appear in a superhero comic is Demon Dusha. He appeared in Cyforce, uh, a title that ran under Marvel. Again, it ran from 1986 to 1989. And here is how we foresee him. So he's in a straight jacket. He's in a facility. He's locked up. And then he is introduced ominously as demon indeed. Well, Sergey, you're the one who gave us an autistic paranormal child. Don't blame us if we can't make him what you want. So, um, implication dito is medyo uncontrollable at unpredictable yung autism. Later on in the series, he is given a lobotomy to get rid of the very unpredictable autism, but to preserve the more dangerous power of pyrokinesis. And then moving on to perhaps who is the most famous superhero that is identified as autistic. Ito ay si Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic and the Fantastic Four have been around in the 60s. And even before he was identified, he was already being claimed by the autistic community because of his portrayal, because of his uh, characteristics of being logic-driven, uh, sometimes being unemotional, and also his obsession with science. But in two instances, he was clearly identified as autistic. The first one being uh, Grant Morrison's Marvel Knights Fantastic Four, one, two, three, four, that ran from 2001 to 2002. There was an incident where they were having problems defeating a bad guy. So to solve the problem, he had to think it out. So he locked himself up in his laboratory, but it was taking days. And his wife was becoming worried. And Alicia, uh, the blind uh, love interest of the thing, identifies him as autistic. She tells Sue that, uh, have you read the articles that I've sent you about Asperger's and autism? I think Reed has it. But... In 2012, in Robert Aguirre Sacasa season one origin, uh, he self-diagnosed. And he says of himself, I, I have self-diagnosed on my case of autism, for which I am currently inventing a cure. Otherwise, Elisa, I assure you, I am of sound mind. So when this came out, it was very controversial. Bear in mind, he was claimed already. Pero nung lumabas ito, nagalit yung autism community. And can you guys tell why? Because he refers to autism as something that he can cure. Right? So it's like something that he can turn off or something that he can take away. 
a lot of uh, autistic individuals feel it is not something that you can turn on and off. It is a part of them. So a lot of uh, them um, replied to this, na, if that is what autism is, then I don't want to be cured because it is a part of what I am, of who I am. So maybe you're thinking, eh, baka sa Marvel lang sila ganyan. Actually, may examples din sa DC. Like, for example, si Black Manta, yung kalaban ni Aquaman. Um, he was identified as autistic. And then, nung bata siya, nilagay siya sa Arkham. Arkham, as you know, is for the criminally insane, right? So nilagay siya sa asylum. And they said that in Arkham, his autistic was cured. So problematic pa rin. And then he came out of it, syempre, kalaban siya. Maybe that's why uh, Dave Cott, the creator of his value comet, says that in superhero comets, the characters that have autism are either shelved or they are characters who are portrayed as criminals with dysfunctional behavior. So in 2014, he created Michael, whom he touts as the first hero with a disorder among comic books. His powers include a, mathem a mathematical mind, artistic gifts, and an abundance of compassion. Face, values co face value comics' plot revolves around social issues such as curing sicknesses, stopping hunger, and creating a society with economic parity. In fact, in issue one, Michael's parents tell him, feel safe, feel wanted, and you will be successful. What does this echo? It echoes the basic desire of inclusion to not be viewed as different or as part of the other. Other comic book genres are not so problematic in uh, showing autism, like in these biographies or memoirs. So here are two examples. The Ride Together is a memoir describing the creator, Paul and Judy Karasik's experiences growing up with their autistic brother, David. So it is a combination of comics created by Paul, the brother, and Judy uh, wrote prose, the sister. You know, Judy, the sister, wrote prose. So it's a, a book that combines prose and comics text and uh, pure text and comments to describe the experience of growing up having an autistic brother. Meanwhile, uh, Circling Normal is an omnibus or a collection of scripts called Clear Blue Water, and it follows the experiences of a multiracial American family whose son Seth is diagnosed with autism at the age of two. Its charm lies in its ability to depict the complicated and communal experience of disability as shared by an entire family. So let me just share a script from Clear Blue Water or Circling Normal. So here are the parents uh, talking to each other about their son. And the mom says, that was Dr. Ross with test results. His EEG, MRI, and all of his blood work came back normal. And the dad says, I can't believe it. Thank God, no tumors, all here. I told you he was fine, he's normal. But if he's so normal, why doesn't he talk? Why is he delayed? And why is he licking the couch? Who cares? His tests are normal. Our son is normal. So, ayan, maganda yung depiction nila ng autism na parang cork lang or like, it's just, a little weirdness in their son, but otherwise they are treating him as normal. In fact, through the reworking of stereotypes and their unique portrayals of autism, circling normal and the ride together demonstrate the power of comics to rewrite and redraw traditional scripts of cognitive disability and break the confining cultural framework through which some people are seen and others overlooked. This is as written by Sarah Birch of the Pennsylvania State University in No Life Lessons Here, Comics, Autism, and Empathetic Scholarship. Going now to the local scene. Um, so yes, my husband and I wrote Doobie Doo Asks, and it was released last year, 2020. It centers around the family who discovers that their only son is on the autism spectrum. 
And now they have to overcome growing up challenges together as a family. And the mom has to accept what can and can't be changed so that their family leads a regular happy life. Some readers have pointed out that it is the first comic book with autism as a subject matter. But in 2009, before this, uh, artist, artist Gabby Atienza released his autobiography called My Life as a Comic Book, an autobiography, his life's journey with Asperger's syndrome. I haven't been able to find copies, so I'm not sure if it's similar to the ride together in that it is a collection of strips combined with prose because the excerpts that I find in the web are prose talking about his childhood. And in the credits, there is a prose editor and a comic book consultant. So maybe that's why readers are saying Doobie Doo Asks is the first comic book to deal with the subject matter, but probably it would be better quantified saying that Doobie Doo Asks is the first Filipino book, not only comic, about ASD, which addresses itself to both ASD and NP, NP is neurotypical, Kids and Families, a book that truly really celebrates neurodiversity. As an ASD mommy, I believe the kids need truly empowering stories that celebrate their unique gifts and make them feel good. This is according to award-winning children's book author and illustrator, May Tobias Papa. So why did I decide to write Do We Do Asks? The first reason is a personal experience that happened to us when my son was in school. So uh, in the third grade, suddenly uh, his teacher started to complain about him almost every day. And one day he came back crying and he asked us, why don't they want to be friends with me anymore? What's wrong with me? This is referring to children that he has been friends with since they were toddlers. So suddenly they just started avoiding him. So what, so what was up? And what, what was it that the teacher was complaining about? She was complaining about behaviors such as being argumentative. He would fight with his teachers. He would fight with his classmates. Um, he would walk out of the classes. He would lie down on the classroom floor and whatever the teacher did, he wouldn't stand up. So, nakahiga lang siya doon. So, bakit? Uh, later on, we would find out that there were triggers. So, the thing to uh, realize here is that these behaviors are triggered by something. And once we provide accommodations for whatever triggers this, they will, they will be fine. So, ano yung triggers? So it turns out na ina-isolate pala siya from the rest of the class. Like his classmates would be told, huwag niyong papansinin yan, huwag niyong lalapitin, lalapitan. Hence, yun nga, they started avoiding him. He had his own desk separate from everybody else. If there were group pictures, he was not allowed to join the group pictures. And one day, magkakaroon ng science, magkakaroon ng science fair, and the experiments that were going to be conducted should be conducted in groups. But the teacher asked us, "Can he perform an experiment by himself? Para kapag nagwakaw siya o nagwala siya, hindi nakakahiya dun sa grupo." But by that time, we already had a diagnosis. And we sort of knew that this was what was triggering his, his meltdowns or his behaviors. So, sinabi namin, no, he'll be fine. He'll join the group. And yun nga, he'll, be, he'll, he'll do great. And he did. Kasi yung mga bata, although they were told not to, not, uh, to avoid him, they were told to, avo they were told to avoid him. Yung binigyan siya ng sarili niyang task. Binigyan siya ng uh, kumbaga, steps that he had to perform so that their group 
can succeed. So, parang isa-isa silang merong task. Pantay-pantay sila. Meron silang kailangan i-perform. Their, their experiment was a success. It was very well received. So, what does this point to? Again, inclusion. He did well kasi hindi na siya treated as an other. He was treated like everybody else. He was included in the, in the activity. Now, uh, what do I think about what do I think about this? Was the teacher being mean? Is she a super villain? No, I don't think she was. It points to probably a lack of awareness because she probably was not equipped as a teacher to deal with a special needs student. Lack of awareness. I mean, even kami, when we started, we also had a lack of awareness. We, it took us four years before we had a diagnosis. At first, when he was small, we didn't know that he had a condition. Why? Kasi a, a lot of us are familiar with autism from what we see in mass media, in the movies, on TV. Diba? So, anong pinoportray sa mass media? It's either yung mga nonverbal na parang quote-unquote may sariling mundo na kahit anong gawin mo, hindi sila nakikipag-interact sa'yo. Or yung mga hindi pa rin nakikipag-interact pero super genius. So, a lot of us, ang tingin na sa autism is ganon. When actually, autism is a spectrum that presents itself differently for individual. No two autistic individuals are alike. In fact, there is a saying in autism communities that if you meet one autistic person, you've only met one autistic person. So I felt there was a lack of awareness. Uh, a lot of us are aware of autism as a condition, but acceptance and accommodations geared towards people with autism are still lacking, mainly due to a lack of understanding. So I felt the need to tell my story in the hopes that if families or an individual facing a similar situation to ours reads the book, it helps them out. Why did I choose comics as a medium? Well, I am a comic book creator by profession. And of course, um, you have to make full use of the tools uh, you are best equipped with to tell your story. And mine just happens to be writing stories for comics. Next, the comic book format, I believe, is appeal appealing to readers of all ages and backgrounds. Comic books are very non-intimidating. Dubidu asks is actually for parents. But uh, we have had readers who are as young as my son, even younger, and they enjoy the book. They like the story. They like the art. So I didn't choose to make a novel. I didn't make a manual about autism. I chose to make a comic because I believe it is the best medium to reach as diverse a background of readers as diverse um, uh, a series of age as possible. And then next comes Speak Off or the Philippine International Comics Festival. This was going to be the first international comics festival in the country in 2019. They had a call for entries and I felt Ito na, this is the stage. This is the venue where I can reach as wide a readership as possible. Kasi syempre ba naman, international festival, di ba? So not just the local creators and readers will come, but readers and fans from other countries as well. Uh, so there, there, there was a call, call for entries in 2019. And uh, fortunately, we were selected as one of the 10 official selection. Unfortunately, dumating si COVID and there has not been a physical festival yet. It's on hold, although yearly, for two years now, nagkaroon na ng online festival. Uh, but yes, the physical festival is pending until it is safe again for all of us to go out. So let me just... Uh, 
talk a little bit about our creation process. Before you start writing, it's important to do research, especially for a topic such as this. It's important to get things right. So the first source, of course, is the doctors and the therapists. Yung diagnosis na binigay sa'yo. Tapos kung meron kang mga tanong, itanong mo na lahat. Kasi sila yung expert dun sa subject. Sila yung nag-aaral ng taon, taon at ilang taon para matutunan yung subject. They are the ones who are best equipped to give you advice. My husband and I also attended autism group lectures and seminars. And then the next is books because I love reading books. So I read a variety of books, summer novels, like Eric Slambuk. Uh, this is written by an award-winning uh, screenplay writer called Fanny Garcia. In fact, the book even won the National Book Awards. And then there's our Andre. Andre, the Andre here is actually the grandson of President Diosdado Makapagal. So, pamangkin siya ni GMA. And yung mama ni Andre is a pioneer of sorts kasi parang siya yata ang unang nag-establish ng school for special needs children dito sa Pilipinas. Foreign books naman, there's Look Me in the Eye, written by John Elder Robinson. He, is, uh, he has Asperger's. He is autistic himself. Kaya lang, matagal, adult na siya nung na-diagnose, nung nabigyan siya ng formal diagnosis. So he's talking about his struggles in childhood kasi it was like the 1960s and it, it was largely relatively unknown. Autism was relatively unknown at the time. He also has a son who happens to be autistic also like him. Then I also consulted how-to books like The Loving Push, uh, written by Dr. Deborah Moore and Dr. Temple Grandin. Dr. Temple Grandin is perhaps the most well-known autistic, uh, autistic personality. Um, she has a very inspiring life story. Again, she was born in the 1950s, 1960s. Her mom was told na hindi ito matututo kasi uh, mentally disabled yung anak mo. But her mom fought to teach her first by herself and then fought to get her into schools. And then she was fortunate enough to have a teacher, a professor, who was very supportive. So it shows kapag mayroong magandang support system, these individuals can succeed. So at first, she experienced discrimination because of her autism. Later on, when she became a professional, uh, ang field kasi niya is animal husbandry. So she was working with farm animals in a state that was full of cowboys. So she faced discrimination again, this time because of her gender. So her, her life story is very inspiring. There is a story about, uh, there is a movie about her. It stars Claire Danes. And she has written a ton of books, both in her field. She has inventions that revolutionize her field. And she also makes how-to books so to help parents and to help autistic individuals. There are also how-to books that are for children, such as Asperger Rules, when they are of reading age or if they can read already so that they can assess themselves because sometimes they can't they have problems recognizing what emotions they feel what thoughts they feel so this teaches them uh, this one is how to make sense of school and friends because it's normally it's very difficult to navigate school but what more for someone who has difficulties with communicating, with reading facial expressions, sometimes it can happen to them, with reading the emotions of others, the intentions of others. There are four kids naman, again, uh, to better explain the condition to my son, uh, I read him books like All Cats Have Asperger Syndrome by Kathy Hoopman and The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, a children's book about, again, Dr. Temple. 
And then I also consulted websites kasi yun ang pinaka-accessible but then you have to be very careful with websites and kailangan mong kilatisin muna kung sino ang credible at sino ang hindi. Autism Pinoy has a good list of developmental pediatricians and then the Autism Society Philippines is the premier autism society in the country. So they help out autistic individuals and they also, pre-pandemic, they had also lectures and seminars and support groups for parents, uh, siblings and caregivers. I'm not sure how, how exactly they conduct it now, but uh, I'm sure they still do, probably online. Next is the writing process. So this is my personal process. Other writers might have something different. So first, I create an outline. Usually, it's a series of scenes when it's fiction. But this is a biography, so I had to remember important incidents and milestones and events in my son's life. So after you create your outline, you draft your manuscript. Pagkakabitin mo na yung mga bullet points na nilagay mo sa outline mo to move your narrative to the point where you want it to go. Doobie Doo Ask is probably the most revised manuscript I ever did. It took me eight revisions because I wanted it to get it as perfect and as the best version of it that I could. Last is editing. So under the under pickoff as an official selection, we get to consult with an editor. And consulting with editors are very important because sometimes they see things that you as a writer don't or it doesn't occur to you. So this can include kunyari, mga uh, continuity errors or how to better execute a scene. Next is copy editing and proofreading. Copy editing uh, mostly involves uh, checking the accuracy of your text and proofreading is the last line of defense and it involves uh, spelling and grammar checks. Next, you give your script to your artist. And this is my husband's art process. So first, he makes thumbnails. So this is like in film, like the storyboard. I'm sure you've seen in YouTube, uh, like Disney storyboards and stuff like that. For comics, they make thumbnails. And this includes breaking down scenes into pages and panels. Because I write my scripts in screenplay style, so I don't put them like panel by panel. So my husband has to be, has to decide uh, how to break down a certain scene into how many pages, into how many panels. So I leave it to his discretion and judgment. Next, he pencils. So dinodraw nila, na niya kung ano yung nilayout niya dun sa thumbnail. Usually, uh, traditional pencil, the old school pencil and old school inking tools. But nowadays, they have what you call digital tools, which is um, penciling and inking through the PC or a tablet. Next is coloring. So coloring your art if your book is colored. And then you place the dialogues and the sound effects or the text. And after that, if there are revisions, you revise it. If you want to revise a dialogue, a text, kung may mali pala, may wrong spelling, wrong grammar, kung meron kang naisip na mas magandang diskarte sa sequence ng panels. And then kung satisfied ka na, you lay it out in book form because you have to give it to the printer. And after that, you compose the cover that is that would get the most, that would grab your reader's attention. So for, for books kasi, the saying that don't judge a book by its cover is not true because the cover is the one that entices you to take it from the shelf and buy it, diba? So my husband made about four versions of the cover and from which we have to choose the best one. So ayan na, meron na tayong comics tungkol sa autism, effective ba siya? Uh, Doobie Doo Ask has been covered by broadsheets and magazines, including the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Manila Bulletin, Esquire, Smart Parenting, and uh, in the international field, it was featured in 
the the best comics of 2020 a year in perspective uh, a blog by london based uh, comic book chronicler and connoisseur he's very well known in comic book circles paul grave his foreign correspondent chose to be do asks along with tarantadong kalbo volume 1 and Teresa bloodlines as the three most notable comics to come out of the Philippines in 2020. But of course, as a creator, as a writer, for me, the most valuable metric of determining a book's success is reader feedback. And we have been getting great, very heartwarming feedback from our readers, such as this person who is disabled himself, he's not autistic, he has a different disability, but he was able to relate to the story. He says that it helps readers of all ages to realize that a person with a disability is just normal and they believe that they are capable to see their own unique abilities. What's more important for able people is to see how you treat PWDs equally like everyone else. And then a filmmaker said, that it's a very heartfelt story and very needed, especially with how Philippine society treats those on the spectrum. A medical doctor and comic book fan was delighted to see that there is a comic that treats medical issues honestly. And of, of course, there are also family members who said that it helped them out, like this uncle who said that his nephew has similar tender tendencies as Bibi do except that the boy hasn't been checked. Ngayon ko po naintindihan na mas kailangan po ng empathy towards sa bata. And surprisingly, we were even able to attract those who usually do not read comic books. So na non-comic book readers, because of the subject matter, picked the book up, gave it a chance and said that they had a very good experience while reading it, like this housewife, who said that she can relate, especially in the part when the doc told you guys about autism, I almost cried. Kasi ganun din ang naging reaction ko. It's a battle for us parents, but fun din most of the time. So these are my sources, all of the stuff that I quoted earlier, if you want to do further reading, and I encourage you to, uh, for their research, so ito yung mga sources ko. And if you are interested to get copies of Doobie to Us, they can be ordered through the Comic Ed store at Shopee or Lazada. And if you have further questions or have feedback about the book or about this lecture, you can feel free to email me at b underscore bams at yahoo.com. Thank you for listening to the lecture. I hope we have time still for the Q&A. So I'll pass it back to the, to the host. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma'am Bambi. Nakakatuwa to hear your experience with Doobie Doo Asks. Congratulations for those achievements coming from Thank your comic you. book, especially those readers who learned from your experience. I'm sure our audience learned a lot about comic book characters with autism and your work, Doobie Doo Asks. Hoping it also sparked uh, the audience's interest in comic books, as you had mentioned earlier, as literature. I know personally, I regained interest with it after hearing your talk. Yay. For those of you who just tuned in, this is our UPSLIS webinar series organized by the UP School of Library and Information Studies. To our audience, if you have any questions for our guests, you can go to SLIS, uh, Slido dot com or sli.do and type in the code autism comics you can also use the qr code shown on the screen to go to our questions please check the previously posted questions and upvote questions you want to be prioritized if you or you can also comment on the questions if you have similar stories or experiences don't forget to include your name and email address in the question if in case we can't entertain them on air we can send you a reply before our questions, I know you're excited to hear uh, our, the answers to the sent questions earlier. We have some announcements first before we proceed. The UPSLIS is pleased to announce the release of its 41st volume of the Philippine Journal of Librarianship and Information Studies, or PHJLIS, formerly the Journal of Philippine Librarianship, or JPL. 
This latest and special issue of the PHJLIS celebrates our 60th founding anniversary and at the same time honors the efforts of various people and institutions behind the progress of LIS education in the Philippines. The issue is a compendium of articles from 10 different library schools around the archipelago and we hope a step towards developing a comprehensive picture of today's LIS education in the Philippines. PHJ LIS is an open access journal. You can view its issues at phjlis.org and articles are available free for download. You may also submit your articles by logging into the same website. If you have any inquiries, you may send an email to editor at phjlis.org. For this latest issue, we would like to congratulate the PHJLIS editorial board led by Professor Ira Benrostro Krabab, Editor-in-Chief, with Professor Mark Anthony Santos, Associate Editor, and Professor Johan Frederick Krabab, Associate Editor and Layout Editor of the... And also, he is the 2021 issue editor. Congratulations po sa inyo. And we look forward to more PHJLIS publications in the future. Thank you also to, to those who already purchased our SLIS Coffee Table book. For those of you who have no, no copies yet, you can now pre-order for our next print run by going to bit.ly slash SLISCTB. That's bit.ly slash SLISCTB. For those of you who are our alumni and all of you who have been were connected with SLIS, have fond memories of UPSLIS, pwedeng ILS or ILIS, depende sa edad. We also want to know your best, funniest, weirdest, oddest, scariest, happiest memories in SLIS to a project we call Hashtag I Remember. If you have something that you want to share, please go to iremember.upslis.info. You might also want to check our 60th anniversary online exhibition at 6060.upslis.info. Also, given that we are in the remote learning setup, the Kaagapay Project for UPBLIS students of the UP Library Science Alumni Association or UPLSAA is still ongoing. We want to ensure that every BLIS student is equipped with the required tools or gadgets for remote learning. The Kaagapay Project is in support of the program, the UP System Kaagapay sa Pag-aaral ng Mga Eskola ng Bayan. You may donate in cash or in kind to help our BLIS students who may be struggling with remote learning. You may send your inquiries to uplsaa.inc at gmail.com. That's uplsaa.inc at gmail.com. Finally, for UPSLIS, we're still accepting donations for the construction and renovation of our new SLIS building across from San Pagita Residence Hall. This is your opportunity to contribute to UPSLIS and LIS education in the country. For your donations or other inquiries, you may contact us via email at admin at slis.upd.edu.ph. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our twitch.tv account, and like our Facebook page, UPSLIS. That's UPSLIS on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Let me give a shout out to our viewers. On Facebook, thank you so much for viewing Sir Roy Mercado and May Tobias Papa for commenting on our video on Facebook. And we also would like to thank our viewers on YouTube and Twitch. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Let's now look at the questions posted on Slido. I hope after those announcements, Ms. our guest Ms. Bambi is ready to uh, accept or, or uh, to answer the questions that we have. Ms. Bambi, ready ka na po ba? Yes, go lang. Yan. So, first question po, regarding din sa, uh, earlier you have uh, mentioned characters uh, with autism in foreign uh, comic books. Sa local comics, meron po bang ibang characters? Parang may bonding dati, pero considered ba siya as something that we could, uh, kumbaga, related dun sa tinatakal natin na autism in comics? Uh, alam mo, before this, nag-isip nga din ako kasi nga, yun nga, I know in Western comics, maraming characters. So, inisip ko, sa local ba meron? And parang walang immediately comes to mind. Parang, kasi when you say autistic, it has, there are certain characteristics that, uh, for example, parang hirap sila mag-socialize, hirap sila mag-communicate, Kerap sila to express their emotions. Parang wala tayong characters na ganon. With bonjing, 
Although hindi ka siya masyadong maalala. I know that I I I have uh, watched the old black and white films, but he seems like a different case. Parang um, mental retardation yata yung kay Bonjing. Iba siya sa autism. Although autism is a spectrum, uh, it, it varies in degrees per person, pero parang yun nga, parang iba yung case ni Bonjing yata. Yes, I would agree, no? Baka kailangan pa natin mas, uh, siguro po, deeper character analysis kung ma, para mas makilala pa natin yung mas malalim at ma-identify po anong pinagdada, anong, anong condition, ah, sorry, anong condition ang meron kay Bonjing bilang karakter mm-hmm. sa isa comics. Maraming salamat po. Next question po tayo. Uh, earlier, may nag-mention nag, uh, dito sa ating questions Uh, regarding the Marvel Cinematic Universe, ano po kaya yung repercussions po nung uh, autism case sa Ma- uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe movies kung si Reed Richards ay may mild autism? Would you, uh, do you have any analysis regarding that on how it could influence the the overall framework mm-hmm. or the story? Well, in the first place, hindi pa sila kasali sa Marvel Cinematic Universe. No? But if Ever in case na magkaroon sila ng movie na kasama sila sa MCU. And as as readers, you can also see in the comments, hindi detrimental kay Reed Richards yung pagiging autistic niya. Although yun nga sa comics naging controversial kasi sinasabi niya gusto niyang ma-cure. But I think hindi siya nilagay sa canon. Mm-hmm. May canon sa comics kasi may tinatawag tayong canon yung parang ito yung established facts sa characters sa series. Hindi na yata sinali sa canon yung kanyang pag-out sa sarili niya, so to speak. But, uh, his autistic characteristics are actually not detrimental. In fact, mas nakakatulong sa kanya yun kasi, di ba, it's what he he has powers, which is yun nga, he can stretch. But it's more of his uh, intellectual ability, his uh, ability, his scientific uh, abilities that help save the day for the team, di ba? So, I don't think, if ever man na mapunta siya sa MCU, I don't think magiging detrimental yon sa pag-save ng world. That's nice. Oo nga, we look forward nga kung may integrate man nga siya dun sa movie series, maging mas malinaw mm-hmm. yung pag-portray dun sa character. Sige mm-hmm. po. Next question po tayo, third question. Uh, one of our viewers, uh, felt that this project seems so personal for you. What were your reasons to tell the story instead of keeping it in? Mm-hmm. Oh, sobrang personal talaga. Mm-hmm. And to be to tell you the truth, at first, when I told my husband, ayaw ng husband ko. Oh. Kasi nga, oh, even, even I had um, little, a little misgiving. Kasi... Yan nga, parang buhay namin siya, we are not outgoing people, hindi kami masyadong makita tungkol sa personal namin buhay. And the more important ano here, factor to consider here is it's this is our son's story na bata pa. Mm-hmm. Na parang isisiwalat mo yung nangyari sa bata sa mundo. Kaya lang, because of the nature then of what happened to us, mm-hmm. na I really feel It is because of a lack of awareness kaya nangyari sa kanya yon lack of awareness on the part of us as parents the teacher who was involved yung um, other kids dahil may lack of awareness I really really felt the need to tell the story to spread awareness and acceptance for individuals like my son na hindi kasi with awareness you will know that hindi mo sila kailangan katakutan. Yes. Huwag mo silang ikahihiya. You know, just with awareness comes acceptance. So that is what they are and they should be accepted for what they are kasi we won't treat anybody else any less. Like for example, malabo yung mata ko. Mm-hmm. Disability siya, di ba? Mm-hmm. Ino-ostracize ba ako dahil malabo yung mata ko? Hindi, di ba? So, so dapat, ganun din ang standard natin sa kanila. So I felt na yun na, lalo na, If there are families or children who are undergoing maybe the same situation as my son did, I really felt that this comic book can help them also. Kaya yun. 
po. And, and yung ngayon parang right now, I would like to thank you and your husband for sharing your story to the world. Kasi alam nga natin na malaki yung maraming learnings na makukuha ang mga tao. Hindi lang yung may families na mayroong person with autism sa family nila, kundi ka yung mga iba din na wala. Kasi may awareness nga, mas makikilala natin, mas matakatugon mm-hmm. tayo uh, properly sa mm-hmm. kanilang mga pangangailangan. Uh-huh. Thank you po. So, uh-huh. At uh, saka kasi, uh-huh. ano eh, parang within the classroom, kahit hindi ka sped teacher, there will be a chance na magkakaroon ka ng autistic student whether he is diagnosed or not. At saka kahit hindi tayo teachers, sa everyday life natin, malaki ang chance na makakahalubino tayo ng mga ganitong individuals. So we should also uh, equip ourselves, educate ourselves how to interact with them so that they are comfortable, so that they will become comfortable also interacting with us. Yes, oo nga. And it also helps nga for them to, ano nga, para maka-jive it sila, maging functional silang individual. Oh, Hindi yung iseset uh-huh. aside natin sila dahil lang yes. sa kanilang condition. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> so, for our viewers, if you have any questions, you may post it by going to slido.com. Type nyo lang po yung code Autism Comics. You can also scan the QR code shown on the screen directly to go to the questions website. So, ano po, personal question lang po from me. How old is your son right now? And does he know he is a comic book character? Mm-hmm. Yung experiences na pinakita sa book, 8 years old pa lang siya. Pero ngayon, 11 na siya. So, nung una, inisip namin, ipapaalam pa lang. Kasi medyo bata pa, no? Eight. Ngayon talagang naintindihan na niya. Wala na sa kanya yun. <laughs> but when, he was, when we were working on it, we were thinking of paalam ba natin na siya ito, tungkol sa kanya, ganun. But because we work at home and nakikita niya yung trabaho namin, it's kind of unavoidable for him not to see. Mm-hmm. So we explained to him what it is and why we felt it's important to tell his story. And he understood naman. He will say na, yes, it will, maybe it will help parents like you. Uh, he will say like And naging advantage din sa amin kasi to correct na kami na oh no that's not what happened. Wala na siya yung unang-unang naging critic namin which helped us also. Actually that's what I was about to ask yung naging part ba siya ng creative process ninyo na mag-asawa nung ginubuo niyo yung comics aside from critiquing yung content and the accuracy of the events. Meron pa ba siyang naging role dun sa pag-create ng comic book? Meron siyang meron kaming nilagay doon na artwork niya dun sa oh. comic book. Kasi, ano eh, no, at that time, he created his own comic book superhero character. So, nilagay namin, naging part ng story yung superhero character na ginawa niya. And then, nandun yung artwork niya uh, featuring that character. That's nice. Ano pong reaction niya nung lumabas na yung comic book sa, I mean, out na siya, lalabas na ng publisher yung comic book at hawak-hawak, nahawakan na niya? Uh, Dahil bata pa, parang wala lang. Okay. <laughs> diba? Kaya, hindi siya, yun nga, hindi naman siya nagalit or nalungkot. Pero, yun nga, parang, okay. Okay, okay that's it. Oh, parang but, but I'm sure na, yun nga, he is, in in his own way, he is proud of it because minsan, nari, dahil online class, diba? minsan mm-hmm. naririnig namin na, yun nga, sasabihin niya na gumawa ng comics yung nanay at tatay niya. Ngayon. So, so, ayun. Positive naman. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, hearing from the child na pin, ano, pinasabi niya sa ibang tao. I know he's very proud of what you have done. So, mm-hmm. isa pa pong question pa from uh, one of our viewers. The experiences na kinuwento ninyo, Miss Tambi, ay more sa school. How mm-hmm. about sa bahay? May changes po ba mm-hmm. kayo na ginawa in response to what is happening at home? Yes, definitely. Kahit na hindi siya masyadong ma-meltdown ang tawag is meltdown mm-hmm. hindi siya masyadong ma-meltdown at home kasi syempre ang comfort zone niya is nasa bahay so wala siyang masyadong source of anxiety sa bahay but uh, the thing is um, he's receiving therapy from a from an occupational therapist so ang therapy ay effective lang kung ginagawa ng 
teacher, ng parent. Diba? Uh, so, ang mga tinuturo ng therapist, dapat ginagawa niyo din sa bahay. Dapat nangyayari din sa school. So, in, hindi pwede na paglabas niya ng therapy center, wala na eh. Kasi hindi yan mararating niya. So yes, there were adjustments that we had to do also at home. But it's more of like mga stuff like setting schedules. And then yun nga parang briefing him about uh, what is what is to be expected within the day. Mga ganyan. Mga anong lulutuin, anong pagkain sa lunch. Mga ganyan. Ayaw kasi niya, isang, isang characteristic kasi niya is parang ayaw niya ng mga unexpected Ano, so, mga, mga ganun. Basically, it's not anything drastic. But yes, you have to adjust also. As parents, you have to adjust also dun sa pagbibigay ng accommodations sa kanya. Hmm. Meron nga lang pong extra effort. Pero I know communication oh. nga is key. Pero oh. communicate mo talaga sa kanya constantly oh. what's happening. Ex- exactly. Because things that might be naturally occurring to us might not occur to them. Like, for example, ayan, sa, sa school, kanyari, mag absent si science teacher. Mm. So, dahil unexpected yon, hindi na nila alam ang gagawin. Tayo, natural, syempre, parang hindi natin pag-iisipan yun, matutuwa pa tayo, absent si teacher. <laughs> Pero siya, kailangan nilang ma-brief ng mga possibilities na baka may dumating na substitute, baka pag... <laughs> <laughs> baka, yeah, baka may dumating na substitute teacher, baka pa work on your own, baka i-dismiss kayo ng maaga. Kailangan aware sila nun sa mga possibilities so that they can adjust din kung anong gagawin nila. Parang ganun lang. Parang kailangan lang nila ng plano for all eventualities. I'm speaking in the general, no? Pero yun nga, it's not, it doesn't apply to, to all. nga each nga nga naalala ko lang kaya nga siya tinatawag na ano eh, no? children with special needs they are treated as mm-hmm. individuals with special yes. well, attention yes. ng bibigyan yes. talaga natin sila ng special attention yes. mm-hmm. so uh, another question po uh, madami po bang dapat depth ng research sa topic pag gagawa ka ng original comics how rigorous siguro yung, yung research mo as a, as an author Para sa akin, oo. But it will va- vary, of course, depending on the author. Kung ano yung sy- sistema mo. For me, I love doing research. Um, why? Why is research important? E fiction naman, di ba? E comics naman, di ba? Bakit kaila, hindi ka naman gumagawa ng textbook? Why? Kasi, if you know your subject matter... If you have experience, if you have experienced it, if you have knowledge about it, if you have researched about it, dun lumalabas yung authenticity ng story. Pag hindi authentic yung story, malalaman ng reader yan eh. Di ba parang, for example, di ba nakaka-turn off, kunyari, um, oh, I'm writing, I'm I'm a foreigner, I'm writing about the Philippines. Sa Pilipinas, ang daming... But kanyan, kagaya ng nangyari kay Claire din, si ba, ang daming ipis. Magagalit ka, di ba? Kasi while there are some places na may ipis, hindi naman yung sobrang sandamak na ipis, di ba? Parang, so parang you you will, as a reader, you will say, hindi naman patoto, hindi to, di ba? Parang this is BS. Why should I continue reading this? So that is where the research come in because you have to lend authenticity to your story even if it is fiction. Yeah. Yan, oo nga naman. Authenticity para din mas ano, anchored siya towards reality. Mas mas relatable. Hindi yes. ka ma, hindi ganoon ka absurd na ha, pat nangyari. Oh, oo, oh, oh, oh. kasi you have to give some you have to give something for your readers to relate to. Diba? Kasi yeah. otherwise, otherwise but kita babasahin, but kita pa nang nauorin, di ba? Di ba? Oh, that's so oh, that's a good ano, that's a good very good point for every Uh, creative work, there's, there's a level of relatability nga naman to, for, for the audience to catch up with what you're trying to say. So, for our audience, if you have any questions, reminder lang again, you may post it by going to slido.com or sli.do and type the code Autism Comics. You can also scan the QR code. Wala kaya. You can also scan the QR code sa baba po ni Ms. Dami sa screen to directly go to the questions website. 
So, meron pong uh, comment po dito si Sir Igor or uh, question, question kum comment. Uh, sabi ni Sir Igor, bakit sa book baliktad si Olan ang may salamin? Hindi ko din alam. <laughs> may I will ask. Bakit daw may salamin ka dun sa book? Ako wala. <laughs> ang hirap ng tanong ni Igor. Tina- tinatawanan lang siya. Um, <laughs> Ewan ko sa kanya. Actually, hindi ko alam. Para lang may ba, I suppose. Creative decision nga siguro. Creative ano? <laughs> Parang sige, ito yung gagawin ko. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Pasayhay po kami kay Sir Roland. Uh, regards po dyan sa inyo sa bahay. So, another question po. Uh, excited po siguro yung ating viewer dito sa inyong work. Sabi po niya, will there be a part two of the book? Meron po ba kayong nagbo-brew? Merong pinaplano. Pero yun nga, share, share ko lang na actually nung pagkatapos namin i-release to for, for me, parang the story was done. Because ang purpose ko is yun nga, to spread awareness of what happened to us. For me, parang tapos na yan. Eh. Wala na akong further plans of a sequel at that time. Kaya lang, Itong when readers started to give feedback and they are saying na uh, uh, this is uh, like recently meron autistic individual na nagsabi ngayon lang akong nakabasa ng comics na ganito. In, in fact, it's being touted at, as the first local comic to treat autism as a subject matter. So with this feedback, parang na-realize ko yung sinasabi nila na ah, representation matters talaga in media. Kasi yun nga, parang nakaka-relate sila. Parang it, it, for them kasi probably there is a feeling of yun nga, na ostracized sila, that they are alone. They can, in this book, they saw someone they can relate to. Na siguro feeling nila finally okay. Meron ng nakakaintindi sa amin. Diba? Parang it's just good to feel this parang, uh, ano man tawag, parang connection. Diba? So after akong nabigyan lang mga ganun na feedback, sabi ko, okay, parang sige, gagawa na tayo ng sequel. But this time, we wanted to be, kasi, kasi the first book is from the point of view of the parents, diba? Kinuento nila. So this time, um, we want it to be from the point of view of the child naman. So that we can better show na, oh, ganito yung situation, on the outside, it looks ordinary, like kunyari, tatawid ka sa kalye. Pero sa kanila, ganito yun. So I want to show that, so that people can see what it is to be uh, to be like para magkaroon ng empathy sa kanila and uh, i guess it's also easier kasi nga ma- dahil my son is a bit older na mm-hmm. pwede ko na siyang ma-interview na ano bang nararamdaman mo para mas na-express na niya and it's so, quite yes book. it's quite interesting also and i kumuga hindi ko ma-imagine ko siguro si Sir Roland ang may hand dito pero ini-imagine ko paano kaya i-represent yung chaos in his head or kung uh, meron na trigger siya paano siya i-represent hmm. in a comic book and that's a huge hmm. challenge for you yes uh, uh, ano pa kaya yung parang magiging uh, kumbaga challenge uh, challenges niyo before and in this sequel that you're planning to work on Ano po yung mga challenges ninyo in in creating the story and creating the comic book? Mm. Isa na yung nabanggit mo, no? yung actually mahirap siya i-visualize, lalo na kung hindi mo naman na-experience. But um, if you will see dun sa first book, magaling naman yung parang visual, ano niya, yung basically if, if you remove all of the images, parang conversation lang siya eh, which is not very exciting in a comic book. Pero yun nga, masyad, marami siyang ginawang mga visualizations na ginawa with the colors and the lighting and mga ganyan. Um, other challenges, um, well, yun nga, parang uh, as, a, as a married couple, syempre, parang kapag may creative difference, nagiging na, nabibring in yung parang away nyo ng mag-asawa. Parang <laughs> nadadagdag yung ganun. 
But, on the other side of that mm-hmm. is, dahil mag-asawa kayo, madali lang ma-resolve. Diba? As opposed to other artist and writer team, sometimes, hindi na sila nagkakabatian, diba? Parang dahil may creative difference sila. Wala na. Hindi na sila, nag- <laughs> nag-iwalay na sila. Na. Diba? Pukuha na lang ako ibang artist. Mm-hmm. But okay. for, for us, for us kasi, dahil mag-asawa kami, it's easier to talk na, it's easier to talk things out na bakit mo you know, diniskartingan ng gano'n. So explain niya, ah, okay, sige. Okay. Diba? Parang it's easier to iron out the differences. Okay. And it seems like, ano, no, I could just oh, I could just imagine you're at home like, like watching TV or having dinner and talking about <laughs> talking about details. So kahit nakahiga na kayo sa kama na gano'n, parang ayaw, oh. ayaw, comic book, etc. Cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Isa pa yun, madali lang yun. Ito na yung script ko, but tapasan mo lang sa kanila. Ayaw, mabilis lang. Instant, feed, instant feedback din na yun nga. O oh, sige, ganito ko, didiscartehan tong panel na to. So, madali lang din i-discuss. Yung, mabilis yung process. Okay. And also, because, uh, because we're comfortable na with each other, kilala na rin namin yung work habits, work ethic. Diba? So, wala nang problema pagdating doon. Wala nang adjustan adjustan Oo nga, nakakatuwa. May, may prior relationship na before establishing a working relationship for the project. Uh, may question po din dito sa uh, Slido. Uh, plug po ulit. Available po ba locally yung mga minention nyo na books? Para lang po ah, mga ngayon lang okay. na join in. Actually, yun lang sad to say, medyo mahirap siya hanapin. Eto, yung mga foreign, actually, ang nangyari dyan, Pinabili ko siya sa kapatid ko na nasa States. Tapos dito na lang, pinad- pinadala na lang dito. Kasi mahirap maghanap ng references on the subject matter. As in, mahirap. But I know that sa Autism Society, pwede kaya tang humiram. I think they have ano there, uh, references, pamphlets, and books that you can borrow. But as for yung buying for your own self, Medyo, ma- medyo mahirap. So, yung mga foreign books, um, pinabili ko sa kapatid ko. Ito, R. Andre, ito uh, local. So, bi- I th- ewan ko lang kung may copies pa, pero binili ko siya sa Autism Society. They have our Shopee shop. Just look for the Autism Society Philippines. etong Eric Slam book ang mas mahirap uh, hanapin. Uh, tinawagan ko pa yung publisher for copies. The publisher is Angel ba? Angel? Uh, yes, Angel. So, tinawagan ko pa yung publisher kung may copy siya. Tapos, I was able to get a copy. Hopefully, ngayon meron pa kasi medyo matagal na siya. Early 2000s pa siya tinublish. Yun. What about po yung Dubidu Asks? Pa-plug mo. Dubidu Asks. Oo. Oh, baka po Dubidu. ngayon lang nag-tune in yung ating uh, viewer. Dubidu Asks, yung mga copies, napakadaling mag-order kasi meron kaming shop sa Shopee at saka sa Lazada. So, search na lang yung Dubidu Asks. Under siya ng Comic Ed Store. Um, it's only 400. Meron na kasi akong nakikitang mga parang scalpers Ooh. sa Shopee. Oo oh, na. <laughs> Dinodoble, triple nila yung yung presyo, so please um, buy from Comic Ed. Ma- may the legit copies. Ah, well, syempre, legit din naman. It's just that pinapatunga nila. But yun nga, the cheaper copies are through Comic Ed. Kasi yung iba talagang 1,000, 3,000. Mga sobrang grabe. Oo, ewan ko lang kung uh, <laughs> nakakarating <asya>. yun. <laughs> so, <laughs> hindi ko alam kung paano nila. Ewan. But yeah, uh, comic, no, to... comic at, at Shopee or Lazada. Apo. Comic and they at... also have a uh, they also have a Facebook page pwede kayong mag-PM sa kanila Comic at K O M I K E T. Ayan, that's nice. So, nga, comic at tayo support local authors. Sige, meron po tayo pang uh, a few more questions left. Uh, meron po tayo isa dito sa slide. Oh. I admire you and your family's bravery Thank in you. telling your real life story through your comics. As a writer, would you advise using a pseudonym for others who would like to create works on sensitive topics for privacy purposes? Yes, definitely, def- definite, definitely. Um, for 
obviously my son is not named Dooby Doo, you know. <laughs> so for his privacy, since he is a child, ah, uh, gumamit ako ng fake name. For myself and my husband, dahil alam namin na ipopromote naman kasi namin siya, so pick off and other, ano na, yun nga, nakadating pa kami sa Singapore. And hindi na kami gumamit ng pseudonym. But, of course, it is up to you, of course, if if you feel uncomfortable using your own name, your own details, yes, by all means, use a pseudonym. As long as, yun nga, you are comfortable with telling your story. Kasi yun ang importante. So, That's nice. Speaking Whatever of, helps you in telling your story. Oh, oh, para kung saan ka mas, saan mas comfortable yung writer. Yes. And speaking of speaking mm-hmm. of telling stories, ano, any words for aspiring comic book writers? Mm, uh, magsulat lang ng magsulat. I know that parang hindi masyadong helpful. Pero sobrang helpful nun. It's like a It's like riding a bicycle. Kapag hindi mo siya ina-exercise, mag, hindi, may hirapan ka magsulat ulit. Dapat araw-araw, kahit kung ano lang, kunyari, oh, kanina, kumain ako ng capsulon. Basta uh, the physical ano, of writing. And then also, uh, like I mentioned earlier, do your research on the subject matter that you want to write about. Uh, magbasa, manood ng kung ano man yung anong manood ng lahat actually manood kayo ng cartoons, ng anime ng K-pop, ng Hollywood ng Bollywood lahat kasi it will help you with knowing the trends diba? it's important for you to know the trends uh, kasi hin- nobody's going to pick up your book or story kung sa tingin nila wala namang magbabasa, di ba? Parang it's a sad reality, but it's the reality of it. So, you know, have to ano, anong trendy, anong pato. Also, it helps you with storytelling. Uh, kasi malalaman mo yung how, how does, how does, a, how does a K-drama break down a story? Diba? How does a Hollywood film break down a story? Parang how do they get from point A to point C? Mm-hmm. Diba? So, um, get exposed to media. Or if it's comics, yun nga, magbasa kayo ng not just American, manga, webtoons. Marami ng ano ngayon. So, iba-iba yung convention. So, once you are once you are exposed to all of these, matututunan mo din yung conventions na yun. So, yun. That's nice. And ano po, aside from the comic book writers, I know there are also parents who are watching right now. Ano po yung advice na may nyo for parents with of children with autism? Mm, for parents who are, kunyara, they, sus- they suspect na baka may autism or some other developmental delay, yung anak nila, it's important to get a diagnosis. I know na it's a bit expensive lalo na if you go to a developmental well you have nowhere to go except for a developmental pediatrician medyo mahal ang kanilang consultation fee at saka sadly parang hindi pa ganoon kadami sa Pilipinas ang development developmental pediatricians but i know that there are some who offer uh, consultancy services for free but the first step is always getting a diagnosis why kasi doon mo malalaman kung anong klaseng accommodation and help that they need. Kasi baka mamaya, akala mo lang, baka ganito lang yung anak ko. Mm-hmm. Yung pala, so, ito ang gagawin ko. Mm-hmm. Ito's mali. Diba? Like for us, actually, it took us four years before we were given an autism diagnosis. Diba? So, hindi nawawala yung uh, mga meltdowns mo sa school. Kasi nung una, sinabi, uh, gifted child siya. Mm-hmm. Tapos sinabi, hindi may ADHD siya. So with each diagnosis, iba-iba yung pag mo. Mm-hmm. So bakit hindi nawawala? So it's, it was only when he was diagnosed as autistic were we able to provide yung proper accommodations. And now, yun nga, he's okay na at, at school. Kasi we found a school who can attend to his needs. So, ganun din. Um, if you need also, 
uh, if your child is also a school going age na and special needs siya, consult niya yung DepEd website kasi nakalista doon lahat ng schools per, per region, per city na SPED or SPED support. There are public schools that offer SPED okay. and naka, naka-divide sa, sa DepEd yung list of public schools and list of private schools in your area that offer SPED support. That's nice. Oo nga. Medyo kailangan nga lang talaga ng parang makiramdam mabuti no? para na-diagnose nga siya ng maaga. And yeah, marami nga namang pwedeng tumulong. Although it's quite... Ay, one, one more one more point pala. Sige sorry. Po. Sorry. Sige sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Na, yun nga. Parang I know it's a, a rather sensitive topic. Pero um, for us parents, the most important na huwag tayong maging in denial. Diba? Pag, I'm sure mapapansin naman natin if uh, eventually if there's something uh, not typical in our child or if the teacher says na ganito yung behavior niya sa school maybe you should have him check huwag na tayong maging in denial kasi if we deny, how, how will we be able to help? Diba? If we don't accept yung fact na ganito siya we don't face it we will not be in a position to help him. And I'm sure every parent wants to help their child yes. to be successful in life. Yes. Pag dinilay natin sa kanila itong mga to, hindi sila magiging successful individuals. Hindi sila makakafunction sa society. Thank so, you so ayun. much. Maraming salamat po, Ms. Bambi, for very, you know, very important, very ano, heartwarming. Ramdam ko na galing talaga sa parent yung advice na binibigay ni Ms. Bambi coming from experience. How can we follow your work po? Could we have your social media pages? Bamensyon yes. na lang po para sa ating uh, viewers. Uh, on Facebook, uh, look for comics, C-O-M-I-C-S, by Imagination, A-M-A-G-I. N-A-T-I-O-N Comics by Imagination Sa Instagram <laughs> Sa Instagram uh, Ano din siya Comics underscore by Imagination naman So Facebook and Instagram And then on Twitter Imagination underscore C Yeah, that's nice Para po masundan niyo po si Miss Tammy at ang kanyang mga works, andito po sa baba ko yung kanyang social media accounts. Thank you so much, Ma'am Bambi, for answering our mm-hmm. questions. Again, visit Thank her you. social sa andito po sa baba ng screen. She is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Ayan. We will now award the Certificate of Appreciation to our guest speaker. The certificate reads, The University of the Philippines School of Library and Information Studies presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Bambi Eloriaga Amago for delivering her valuable webinar entitled Autism in Comics as part of the 2021 UP School of Library and Information Studies lecture series in celebration of its 60th anniversary. Given the 6th day of October 2021 at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. Signed, Paul Jason B. Perez, SLIS Faculty and Head, SLIS at 60 Committee, and Mary Grace P. Golfo, Barcelona. So, so. so. Ayan, natanggap ni Miss Bambi. Yay! <laughs> Yay. Thank, you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, Ma'am Bambi. Would, would you like to greet anyone who is watching today? Mm, magandang hapon sa kanilang lahat. Salamat sa pagbibigay nyo ng oras sa panonood nito. Sana marami po kayong napulot. At sana po uh, may mga natulungan sa ating munting lecture. Thank you, thank you po again, Miss Bambi. And we wish you the very best in all of your endeavors. And we look forward to the sequel and your more, 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 more publications and more accolades to come for you. We wish you all the best po. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, SLIS. To all our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. And we hope you all had a great learning experience from this webinar. Thank you also to our SLIS faculty for making this event possible. Special mention po kay Professor Johan Frederick Kabab, Sir Igor, for inviting our speaker, Ms. Bambi. And special shout out too to our hardworking and ever reliable tech team, Professor Nathan Isip and Professor Mark Santos and Professor Dan, Ant- Dan Durado for managing the tech side of this event. And also to Professor Johan Frederick Kabab and Mr. Ridge Paul Reyes for their work on the graphics and publicity materials and for assisting uh, our speaker in her 
lecture. To give feedback and to receive your certificates, please don't forget to register using the link shown on the screen. This link will only be active for a month, so make sure to fill out the form before it expires. You can still leave, leave an evaluation at any time during this period. If you miss portions of this webinar, you may rewatch it as a Facebook video or check our YouTube channel. For updates on our upcoming activities, please follow us at our official Facebook page, UPSLIS, and subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels, youtube.com slash UPSLIS and twitch.tv slash UPSLIS, or visit our website, slis.upd.edu.ph. You can also catch our online talk shows on YouTube for the record, Faculty Room, the student-produced digital scholarship lecture series, Coffee Break, Reflections and Conversations, and our new series called Off the Record, a student-led spin-off of our For the Record series that discusses key concepts in archives and records management. If you like our videos on social media, please don't hesitate to share it. And watch out for our next month's webinar on November 3 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon with our guest, Dr. Jason Cabanes, who will be presenting on the imaginative dimension of how Filipinos engage with digital disinformation. That will be on November 3 at 2 o'clock p.m. Final, plug, uh, final plugs lang. The 10th Asia-Pacific Library and Information Education and Practice Conference will be held online on October 21 and 22. This year's ALEP conference will explore the crossroads of information Human Rights and Social Justice and Equality. The keynote speaker for this conference is attorney Jose Manuel Chel Jocno. UPS SLIS is one of the co-hosts of this conference. Registration is free and available via Eventbrite. Please visit the conference website at a-liep.org for more information. That's a-liep.org for more information about the 10th ALEP this year. That wraps up our webinar Wednesday for October. Once again, this is Elijah Darhuan, your host and moderator, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much for joining and hope to see you soon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Thank you.